Hi everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swell Watch on SurfingMagazine.com. It's March 25th, 2016. Time for another video. El Nino is just about all gone. It's getting out of our rainy season. There's still a lot to talk about though. We got surf headed our way. We've got it from both hemispheres right now. We're in that transition time. It's spring. So I wanted to show you what's going on because there's a new pattern that's developed. I've talked about it before, the Omega Block. It's uh, something interesting that can happen this time of year. Why we could also possibly see some rain out of that. Not necessarily El Nino driven storms for rain, but speaking of El Nino, we could be seeing more El Nino later in the year. It got some big differences going on in the models, and that can sound confusing just saying it, so I wanted to show you why that's so confusing, why there's actually some differences, and why we still could see a probable good chance of seeing some type of return to El Nino by the end of the year. A lot to get into, I want to cover it just real quick with you, so let's take a look at what's going on right now. So the first thing, let's just take a look at the surf. This is one of my Wavecast models over on wavecast.com. And showing the northern hemisphere, the colors are of course the uh, significant wave heights. We can see some wind swell over here, or this is Southern California. So some wind swell has picked up, and that's what we've been seeing. That does wane over time. Picks up a little bit in the outer waters, but not a lot. But if you notice what's happening over here on the left-hand side of the screen, coming out of the Bering Sea off the Kamchatka Peninsula right here, we see another system starting to form. Pretty good sized system actually that'd be throwing some surf our way. It looks like it'd probably be heading our way probably around the first or second. You can see why. Take a look at this. It's got a pretty good size as it grows, but look what happens though with it. Not necessarily the best of news. It goes right toward Hawaii. That's those little dots right there on the map. Of course, that's not ideal. Um, for us. Now, if there's going to be a lot more swell to be thrown at Hawaii because of this. It's heading directly there. We're just going to get a glancing blow from this, but we should still see some decent uh, northwest ground swell then around, probably around the first second. Still keep an eye on that. You can see that's still out on the long range models. But something else that's interesting now that I've uh, directed your attention to this side of the screen, let's take a look at the other models. I'm backing it up. Take a look back over here at California and what happens. See this pattern right here? You can see these storms. Watch what happens. They start to circulate around. See this wind swell fetch start to pick up that's around the 28th 29th we start seeing that really start to increase and the reason for that I'll get to in just a second but taking a look real quickly at the southern hemisphere well, there's been a lot of activity down there too. We can see that this right off of uh, Antarctica, this is uh, New Zealand down here, as you can see Antarctica would be below where the model is showing. There's been a lot of activity swirling around. The jet stream is starting to loosen up enough to where these storms aren't guided straight across. Now we're getting into, of course, their fall and of course then soon winter season, which will be then our southern hemisphere swell season when the storms really start to pick up. But the jet stream is weak enough to where these storms are starting to guide northward. And as that happens, swell then gets directed northward toward, of course, Costa Rica, Central America over here, but then to Southern California. So that's good news. We're going to start seeing some Southern Hemisphere swell right around the, uh, the 29th and start increasing more. Peak right around the end of the month and then, of course, maybe also Friday the 1st, some leftovers into, of course, the weekend of the 2nd. Got to see how that progresses, though, over the next couple days. So going back here, though, to the Northern Hemisphere and why we were seeing this wind swell start to pick up along the coast. Well, there's a good reason for that. The jet stream right now isn't in an ideal place. This is uh, the jet stream on the FN Mach models. We can see the uh, these winds. Uh, this is a dead space right here. This is actually high pressure that's dominating this area, and I'll show you more on that in just a second. But you can see there's not a whole lot holding that jet stream together. So as the jet stream progresses out of the Western Pacific, it gets battered up against this blocking high pressure, and it just gets split in two. So it's not really guiding storms, but watch real closely as we move this forward in time. And look at the jet stream up here in the Gulf of Alaska. It starts to take this horseshoe shape, or what's also known as an omega block. And that makes the formation of what looks like the Greek letter omega. You can see that a little better when you take a look at the vorticity. So this is pretty much, let's think of this as high and low pressure. If blue was high pressure, red would be low pressure, just different areas of vorticity. So as we move the models in forward in time, we can see, yeah, we've got this blocking high pressure, little pulse coming through here on Friday into Saturday, not, not a whole lot of anything. We start seeing some gradients tighten up along the coast, some winds that'll start to pick up as that high pressure breaks down. 
But notice what happens with this omega block. That high pressure builds in. Strong ridge pushing northward. There's that swell maker that would bring something around the first to second, that one that uh, formed out of the Bering Sea. And look at this guy here starting to move down. This low pressure and area vorticity, that's going to start kicking up winds. And as it does, it then creates wind swell fetch. And you can see, boom, low pressure system, low pressure system, high pressure in between. This is a textbook omega blocking pattern. And this happens a lot during the springtime in California and causes those north northwest winds. And when we do get then an offshore event, when it passes, it tends to be northeast. So as that system passes, then boom, there's a little bit on the backside that could cause some north northeast winds because of these pressure gradients. But we don't get those easterly offshores like we do during the fall. So another thing too is when you take a look at the system falling down uh, from the northern latitudes, since it didn't come across the ocean, it didn't actually pick up any precipitation. So this is where the precipitation, the, the rain forecast gets real tricky. The farther out over the water this low pressure system can go, the more chance it has to pick up moisture. And right now there's just really no moisture plumes, and of course that's really very typical of having any uh, significant high pressure area. So some chances of rain are in the forecast next week, not a whole lot because of this. The best chance seems to be near toward the end of the week, around the first, but even that's just a uh, possible sprinkles, trace amounts, by the looks of things right now. If this thing though can move out farther, out to the to the west, then we could possibly see something more. So that's kind of how things are looking right now on the short range for as far as surf and weather goes. But on the long range, let's take a look at El Nino. So this is the ever familiar sea surface temperature anomaly chart. And we can see that there's still an El Nino signal. It's actually quite weak though. There hasn't been a whole lot. The Pacific waters though do remain abnormally warm. What was being called the blob, the Northeast Pacific warm anomaly has dissipated. But look at this blobbiness out here. So there's still some warm anomalies that are left, not just in the Northern hemisphere, also in the southern hemisphere as well. So this in itself though is pretty much though equaled out um, as far as the difference in temperature and as we've discussed before on other videos is that it's the delta that actually makes the difference. And a good example of the delta is when we take a look at the models. This is uh, March 24th, 1998. The El Nino signal was much stronger. We can see red going across here. And off Peru, there was quite still a signal. The delta difference, too, was greater. There was a lot more cold water across the areas of the Pacific compared to the warm water. And of course, then that makes for a stronger winds, a big difference in temperature, weather, climate in general. So we're not that much far off. We're in nothing very significant as far as El Nino goes right now. So when we take a look at the models going forward, this is the CFSV2 forecast, which takes into account a lot of different models that get thrown in and seeing what could possibly happen then over the next few months. Right now, we're taking a look at March, April. That's this section right down here, and that's why it's black. All these other lines that go off, well, those are probabilities, and the dashed line, that's the mean. That's what is probably more likely by the looks of it. So if we take a look, we can see April, May, June, May, June, July, July, uh, June, July, August. Out here at the end, that's October, November, December, and that would be the end of this year. And this is what's interesting. A lot of models do show that there could be a La Nina. Anything below this line here is a La Nina. It would be negative uh, temperatures across the uh, eastern equatorial Pacific. But over here, we still see a good possibility of some type of El Nino building. If we get into a strong La Nina, that's where we get the ridiculously resilient ridge. We, we get a lot of blocking high pressure, and we just don't get the surf or the rain that we need in Southern California. But the forecasts get really tricky when we take a look at this. So, and nobody really knows, but when you take a look at up here on the top left, these are what the models are saying. And when you take a look down here on the bottom right, this is what the forecast consensus is from the forecasters with CPC and IRA, IRI, excuse me. So, in both cases, if you take a look at the line here for when you take a look at the climatological probability, the red line uh, is El Nino. But look, the blue line just follows it too. And it's like, yeah, it's a pretty good chance. There's about a 30% probability near the end of the year. There's some type of probability we'd go into it. But the forecasters are saying right now, it's like, well, uh, probably not going to have an El Nino. It's probably going to go to La Nina, which would be the uh, diminishing red and the growing blue. And the forecasters are being more bullish on La Nina than what the models are actually saying right now. So it's anyone's guess right now. Nobody exactly knows what to expect. But obviously, the models are saying that there's still a really good probability that we could see some type of El Nino later this year. And of course, that would be great news for more surf and drought relief in California. 
So that's how everything's looking right now. Wanted to keep it short and sweet. We do have surf on the way. Spring is a time of waiting as it is a transition period. So we are seeing activity from both hemispheres. But as far as the epic El Nino storms that we saw back in January and in February, those are probably history right now. We may get you know something, some rabbit get pulled out of the Pacific hat, but I really doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. Wind swell is going to be the name of the game because of that beta, excuse me, the omega uh, blocking pattern. I almost said beta blocker. The omega a blocking pattern uh, that's in place and of course those low pressure systems and dropping down right along the west coast kicking up a lot more winds and then wind swell but having very low chances of bringing any rain our way so the hemisphere though is picking up it's that time of year so as that becomes more active and if el nino by the way gets weaker it tends to loosen up that jet stream down in the southern hemisphere allowing those southern hemisphere storms to drift northward and of course bring more swell direct more swell to southern california keeping our fingers Fingers crossed on that one and it looks like that's possibly going to happen just by what we're seeing right now from what's happening on the models in the southern hemisphere and also what's happening with the El Nino signal. Well that's all I got for right now. If you want to stay updated on videos like this it's real easy in case you haven't done yet you can just subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free, doesn't cost you anything and as soon as I post one of these you'll be the first to know. You can also follow my forecasts on surfingmagazine.com. You can go to surfingmagazine.com or take a quick shortcut to forecasts.surfingmagazine.com and I concentrate on Southern California. And last but not least, you can always follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Nathan Todd Cool. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a subscriber. And until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.